So, welcome to Mace. Giant robot likes to shoot lasers out of its eyes and likes to use its fingers as missiles. And so, we get a couple of, like, scripted bits that we have to dodge, uh, little things that we attack here and there, and some of the coolest stuff. And I really wanted to finish my critique of all of these bits before we get into the really cool parts of this boss fight. This is very similar to that like Guitar Hero critique of uh, rhythm game-like things. You can see there's three legitimate lanes that have been made out of fingers. Very digital. <laughs> I love how he manipulates this cave. He can just kind of like bend it and unbend it at uh, at his giant robot overlord will. It's almost like he's toying with us. Which is funny because he kind of looks like a giant action figure toy. But we are the toys. I don't know. So I can use this, like, can to try to defend myself, but it's, like, pretty much useless. There we go. And now comes the chomping! <laughs> He's like, I'm done with squeezing this, I'm just going to eat. Devourer of bus tunnels. So I didn't really finish my final boss critique, because I wanted to get here before we finished it, but I feel like there was a there was a point that was established about artistic inspiration for the designs of bosses being humanized in a similar way to the mini-boss's designs were inspired in a kind of beast sort of way. And so... They, uh, since their only mission, these robots, is to destroy the player character. And my question is, what makes these characters so successful at challenging the player? What makes them great bosses, is basically what I'm asking. They have the character, they have personality and quirk, they have a logic to their rule set that differentiates each boss from one another. Here, we are in an arena kind of format where the arena itself is like shaken up and threatens to kill us. And so this is like, this is such a beautiful thing because it's the epitome of everything that we've been learning in this game. This like, this phase of the boss fight is like, now we have to fear gravity itself before it, it threatens to crush us to death. It doesn't, it's not, I haven't found it to be very useful, but it's just such a spectacle that it's like, it doesn't matter. One last little bit of this uh, Guitar Hero finger picking action. But this time, without the lanes, now we have to move freely with ourselves. No three lane jumps and ducks and stuff like that. It's like, nope. Get out of here, use the train to your advantage and try not to get blasted. And so, the logic, the logic to each rule set that the boss carries is very important. And each one of them builds on how this, the uh, player has incorporated new ideas into their arsenal every single, every single time. And so now, we are finally being introduced to the final gauntlet, which is big boss with a whole lot of health, we can finally attack its head directly and has a large series of moves that we need to quickly learn how to dodge and fight our way through. Some platforms we can play with, it'll keep throwing canisters at us, which those canisters actually help us, they give us health, but they also come with a random enemy, which, speaking of how this is designed like a like a bunch of action figures and toys, it's kind of fitting that you can get like a like a box that has a random booster pack character in it or something. <laughs> and so 
just like we uh, we talked about the very beginning of all of this whole adventure, we talked about the adventure of play being a huge theme. Each boss has multiple parts, and they with those within those multiple parts, it becomes an adventure to fight a boss. So in like a in a miniaturized way. Oh, there we go. There's our die. He's like haunting us, making sure we're super dead. And he flies off and mocks us from his <laughs> his uh, fortress building that he stands on. So there's this little like miniature adventure within the bigger adventure of Intrusion 2 that each boss totally represents. And we have uh, we have the, the player. We have to figure out their patterns that they go through and how they attack, how to dodge each of their random attacks. And then each boss has those like surprises around every corner. That's where these phases come in. And so it's just, you know, it's just tons of cool shit to explore. And that's what's so amazing about all of this. Whoa, balancing on a... <laughs> on the ledge. I don't know, so that's pretty much all I have to critique out of Intrusion. I mean, it's been about an hour and a half almost of stuff. I'm trying as best I can to stay on topic like I do. But at the same time, it's just like, man, this is just, this is a giant robot that shoots fireballs, and we have just our, our little old tiny gun to defend ourselves with. Love how it jetpacks up from the bottom of the screen, just to show how massive this thing is. It's the first time you kind of get to see its entire body. And now it's going to fire missiles at us on our building from its building. This is where these platforms become a great defense system. And so I'm just going to try to use them not only to block the laser beams, but to hopefully not have to deal with these missiles very often. But yeah, it is a, a long boss fight, this last one. You don't have any checkpoints after this point, after this third phase of the huge boss fight. And this boss fight has its own phases, so, like, this is the third part. We did the uh, tunnel fight, we did the box of doom, and now we're on to the, the straight-up, like, everything fight. And this, we are now into what is, like, the third phase of the fight. And if we die at any of these phases, then we, uh... We have to start it all over again. And so this becomes the ultimate test of everything we've learned about the gravities of the game and the weapons and moving our bodies in the space appropriately to not get hurt very often. Um, we get to see a small taste of many of the enemies. Not all of them, but a good variety of them. No, that was a terrible hit to take. Bummer thing is, is that after the first phase of everything, once you get into these later phases, he doesn't grab the boxes, the containers as much. Which means we don't have access to ammo or health. And so we're totally cut off. We just have to use what we have. And now this, this fourth phase, we have rockets everywhere, but these rockets can be shot back, which is kind of nuts. Because, you know, why not? Why not at this point? If you hit them enough, they'll fly back to their owner. You can postmark these return to sender. Oh, barely just made it in time. So I've got four shots left. The red-tipped missiles are the ones that you can't shoot back, which is cool. 
Okay, so we're running out of ammo in pretty much everything. There we go. This is just what I needed. Oh, crap. Alright, now we've got all the ammo we need. I'm trying to see if I can uh, get out of the robot in order to not take damage, but I don't think that's how it works. It was a good idea. Definitely not going to last long. We don't have the mobility to really deal with these attacks, but much nicer than having to deal with a robot with a person in it. Gosh, we're so close. We just need to not take any more damage. This is it. This is the last little bit. Uh-oh. We're out of ammo. <laughs> Apparently the grenades uh, stop those shots. There we go. Oh, no. Only two health left. There we go! We made it! And he gets all angry! And his head explodes! <laughs> mission complete. I feel like this is the punchline to the game. <laughs> oh, this is just one mission. That's the whole thing. We get our, like, this uh, frog jet thing. It looks like a blue shell almost from Mario Kart. Anyway, that's it. That's all of Intrusion 2. And it is crazy good. Intrusion 2 has some fantastic work inside of such a just a sweet and small package. And it's by no means perfect, but if it were perfect, I probably wouldn't be here spending thousands of words talking about it. It really is a labor of love in such a pure sense, and the designs held inside of this game are extraordinarily inspiring. The themes of play and nature and robotics are so passionately addressed throughout the game that it creates a strong artistic statement about how we as people move through the world. How can I have an effect on the world in my own way, and how can I be a one-man army within my own life? And so Intrusion 2 inspires me to be a hero with respect to complex systems, nature, and play. Anyway, that's all I've got. I mean, subscribe. Become a, a fellow critter today and go into the world, play critically, emotionally, and spiritually. Just like Intrusion 2 has shown, we can use our own bodies to address the world in critical, fun, and playful ways, and that is friggin' awesome! Like some vids, make your own vids, the comments section is yours, let me know what you think about this wacky game, and point out any other themes that you noticed along the way. Thanks to Mr. Mister for suggesting such a wonderful game to play. And uh, I definitely see how it resonates with you as a physics student, in the same way that Just Cause is basically physics pornography. This game totally is as well. Thanks all for watching, we'll see you next time.